Uh, hi, so, uh, Rain, I have a question for you. What high school did I did I teach and coach football at? Adelano High School, I believe. Okay. Do you know who the boxer Ryan Garcia is? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's he just flipped out this week. So, do you know what high school he went to? I'm gonna go ahead and guess Adelano. Yeah. So he, I taught him. He was in one of my classes. For yeah, because how old is he? Like 25 or something. He's like 24, I think 23. That adds up. He he uh he was in one of my Lulu. Get out of here. <laughs> go lay down. Go. My dog is she's in the in the frame. She just got treated, so she's going nuts. So uh, Ryan Garcia was like in one of my classes. He he went to that high school for about six months. I'm all distracted now. Um, <laughs> he, your dog. Yeah, I know. So he he was in one of the classes I taught, and um, I was talking about it on stream this week. Uh huh. And I was like, I taught Ryan Garcia everything he knows because he was tweeting about fucking uh, the the cult of ball and child sacrifice and uh, how they made him uh, watch child things. Yeah, and he also and, got and, abused. Yeah, and he was abused. So. Um, shout out Ryan Garcia. I taught you everything you know. I, uh, I, I also claimed that I was his boxing coach in a short. In a, one of the short, I made a YouTube short this week, and everybody, everybody was freaking out, and they're like, "You're obviously lying. You're obviously lying. How's anybody supposed to take you seriously? Oh, lying to get and clicks, it, I see." And it's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> so on the stream, on the stream, I was pulling up like. Uh, Adelanto's new head coach Isaac Griffin takes the helm of Adelanto High School Saints, and I'm like. Yeah, he and then you Google what high school did Ryan Garcia go to, and it's Adelanto High School. It's like told you, taught him everything know he knows. That. That's I don't see him as being in Adelanto at any point in his life. No, he's from Victorville. Yeah, he's from Victorville. Really? Yeah, he's from Victorville, which is which is another thing. It makes sense that he had a freak out. It makes complete sense he had a t- complete fucking freak out. So do you think it? Because it, it, he's kind of getting that like a Isaac Cappy energy. Co- he's coke. He's a cokehead. It's I was about he's to a say, coke it's like guy. either coke or like maybe a little meth because. It seems like a lot more people than I knew are doing like straight up meth now. Well, it's cocaine psychosis is what it probably is. Cause, but, uh, I mean, a lot of Coke has like meth in it and shit, but the thing that is funny is like, I kept saying that, uh, when I, when I was teaching at Adelanto high school that, um, uh, Ryan Garcia was in my class and he was gay. <laughs> was he in one of your and classes? That, and that, uh, I'm sure he was. I don't know. I'm sure he I was. Fucked up, dude. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah, it's just funny. I, I I do remember kids used to make fun of him though. I do remember that. He seems like he'd be like a really skinny. He was like dork. He was, dude. Now he can just like kind of. I don't even know. I only know he had one fight against another guy and he lost. Gervonta Davis. He was undefeated up until then. He's a good boxer. He's really? he's definitely really good. But like. It was funny because like the high school I taught at was just a bunch of black kids who were like really good at fo- like really like athletic and they were like you're a bitch bro and they, I'm sure he got beat up I'm sure he got beat up <laughs> that's like, what I'm gonna do now yeah so uh, anyways Ryan Garcia he's um, you know he might be gay I don't know <laughs> so do you think like do you think what he's saying is like truthful like even though it's probably it's, obviously I, psychosis I, I, I feel like. Why well, do I think what he said is true? Yes. Well, not I think like, that, but do you think like <laughs> everything he says happened to him? Uh, I don't know. I I'm assuming maybe, but I, I think he definitely has a platform where uh, where he can get the, the stuff out. I, I think what probably happened, uh, besides me teaching him everything he knows, which is true, obviously, but yeah. um, I I think he probably started going down some rabbit holes on the internet, and he got too much too quick, and he realizes that he's in a position that he could expose some stuff. Dude, I wonder if Cat Williams like really threw him for. He's like, oh my god. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. If I say it, I will blow up too. Yeah, right now. Uh, I mean, yeah. He's also like, it was. It's so funny. There's like a, there's a certain stutter you get when you're doing a lot of cocaine. You start to stutter. Um. And there's like this weird press conference he's doing and he's like, I'm not on cocaine. I'm not. And it's like, or you're definitely, you get that when you're like coming off cocaine or something. Yeah. It, yeah. It's cause the hangover is, your uh, brain just sucks. yeah. Well, your brain is like, your brain is, it's a stimulant. So yeah, your, like your brain co- is, is, has been firing at like all the fucking cylinders and then, uh, or like, t- you know, more than normal. And then you get off cocaine, your brain has to slow itself back the down. Basic and, words are hard to. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, but I, I did, I did, uh, I did teach at the high school that he went to for a while. So that was, I think that's pretty funny. I, I think it's just so funny to to say that I taught Ryan Garcia and that I caught him kissing boys in the hallway, <laughs> and like it made people so mad. They're like, well, 
you you uh it's so funny someone someone said something and i responded like well then why did you like comment and subscribe and they're like oh, i didn't i didn't like comment and that subscribe. Wasn't me. there was there was no like comment and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> dude. oh my god so, it's so fucking funny dude it's been crazy so like it just seems too it seems too perfect on like a lot of levels like right after he said that shit andrew tate had him on like he andrew tate has a show with like a thousand people on screen at a time I don't know. I don't, I don't pay attention to that. So yeah, he like interviewed him and like, he was like asking like, oh, okay, you're like, I'm going to need proof, you know, and what you're doing is dangerous. Uh, and he's just like, dude, I got all the fucking proof. I got proof of this shit. And like never, every time yeah, someone like that says that there's going to be no proof. Yeah. Like Corey Feldman has been doing that for fucking Corey Feldman has been doing that for years, dude. He's yeah, been doing that for years. He has good music. Yeah, at least Corey Feldman has the uh, has Ascension. The, Ascension <laughs> Milani. I'm trying to find it. I don't know. Oh, here's it's actually the whole theme of the, oh, uh, no, the album. That's still him. That's still him. Uh, but there's something uh, I, I wanted to. There's a game I wanted to play with you. I think it's gonna be pretty funny. Um, I was looking through Reddit as you do, as you do, yeah, as I one does. Uh, and I've been. For some reason, like reddit.com slash are the presidents has been popping up a lot on my stuff. The presidents. Yeah. Is like, that like a history or just it's just about the presidency. It's like these people who are obsessed with the presidents. Uh <laughs> which I, I don't like the presidents. We talked about the presidents the last couple of weeks. We had President's Day. Yeah. Um it's hard you know, not to in this like election year, you know. Yeah, it's, it's an election year too. The... Election year, whatever. Uh so Richard Nixon was a big fan of um I want to play a game with you. He he was a big fan of racism. Mm. <laughs> oh, I've heard that. And I want to I want to read quotes to you, and I want you to see if they're real. Think if you think they are real or not. Okay, I thought you were going to um, do like Nixon or Hitler. <laughs> no, it's it's going to be okay. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do Nixon <laughs> or Hitler. That's even better. That's a way better way to punch up. <laughs> punch up. Okay. Um, there are times where an abortion is necessary. I know that when you have a black and a white. That's Nixon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I knew he didn't like interracial stuff. Um, you have to face the fact that, well, you know these are all Nixon. Yeah. So that's not going to, we can't play that game. So well, that then game if they're all work. Nixon, then what game would well, he no, Well, the game is, is that I put some in that are not real. Okay. All right. So I want you to keep in mind whether or not you some think Some of these are is, real. Okay. Some of these are real and some of these are not real. All right. Okay. Um, I don't think a woman should ever be in any government job whatsoever. I mean, I really don't. The reason we, the reason why I do is mainly because they are erratic and emotional. Do you think that that's a Nixon quote or not? Not. It is a Nixon quote. Really? Yeah, it's a Nixon quote. Jesus, dude. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe New York shouldn't survive. Maybe it should go through a cycle of destruction. Whoa. Yeah, and this is New York in the 70s when it was like absolute shit old. He did say that. Yeah. Fuck, that is real. Holy he said shit. That one. He did say that one. Okay. Um, some of these get kind of crazy, so I'm going to have to censor some of the words. <laughs> um, They're just all him. Okay. Uh, that one's pretty crazy. Um, the Italians, of course, don't have their heads screwed on tight. They're wonderful people, but dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and he doesn't, he doesn't finish the quote. That's the quote. Dude, that could be anybody. Not real. That's real. He said that. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Jonas are just a very aggressive, abrasive, and obnoxious personality. I'm going to say real. That's real. Yeah, dude, <laughs> it's <like>, real. <laughs> something with like interracials and Jews. I feel like he um, just didn't. Okay. You know, it's a funny thing. Every one of the bastards out there for legalizing marijuana is a Jonah. What the Christ is the matter with the Jonas, Bob? What's the matter with them? I suppose it's because most of them are psychiatrists. They're all psychiatrists. That's real. And that's real. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of interesting. Uh, they put the Jonah interest above America's interest, and it's about goddamn time that the Jonah is in America realize that America's first and the Jonahs are second. Real. That's real, yeah. That's Israel. <laughs> Man, dude. Um, this guy had it in. Look at the Justice Department. It's full of Jonahs. The the lawyers and the all the lawyers in the government are damn Jonahs. Real. Yep. All Jew <laughs> ones are, yeah, all Jonah ones are going to be real. <laughs> The anti the anti-Semitism is stronger than you know, or than we think. You know, it's unfortunate, but it 
that has happened to the Jonas in the past. It happened in Spain. It happened in Germany. It's happening now. And now it's going to happen in America if I get my way. These people don't start behaving. <laughs> Not real. That's real. Holy shit. He's he like, going to genocide like Hitler. <laughs> Literally, this anti-Semitism is stronger than we think. You know, it's unfortunate, but it's happened to the Jonas in Spain. It happened in Germany. It's happening now. It's going to happen in America. You they bet don't your ass if I'm elected. If I get gonna, my way. Dude, he got elected like overwhelmingly. Dude. Yeah, Holy a lot. Shit. Like, I'm pretty sure, I think his was one of those ones where the entire map is red. I'm like pretty sure because he, he ran against like Mick. McDonald or something like that, like Mc, Mc, McDougal or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that, that sounds holy shit, dude. What was going on in the seventies okay, in America? Yeah. Undoubtedly, the most unattractive women in the world are Indian women. They're repulsive, and it's easy to be tough with them. Shit, was that me? No, <laughs> that's not real. <laughs> it's real. Holy hell, he hates everybody, dude. This guy is so racist, dude. <laughs> All right, hang on. This one's this one might be the craziest one. Um, you have to face the fact that the problem is really. The blacks. The key is to devise a system that recognizes this while not appearing to. Mm, not real. That's real. <laughs> they're Dude. all real. That was the joke. The joke was that they're all real. See, I thought that would have been like quoted from like um, David Duke or something. I thought like no, a few they're of those all would real. Be like, they, like he was like insanely racist, dude. Dude, that like Richard Nixon's insane, dude. Dude, that really like makes you. Like that whole KK movement probably like was popping off pretty good then, huh? The KKK? Yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, because civil rights in like the late '60s, like you know, like the '60s was the civil rights era, and then um, Nixon was I think Nixon was elected in '71. Dude, were Americans just like fucking fed up? Yeah, like, they were no, the Yeah, well, because segregation had ended, so they were just like furious. Damn. Especially dude. like in the South and stuff. I wonder what, like, the demographic is, like, non-white voters that voted for Nixon. Dude, what? Probably not very many. I mean, I don't know. You only had two choices, so I don't know. Yeah, it's still the same thing today, but it's like, damn, dude. Yeah, that it, is, like... Nixon is... Nixon's in, insane. So, I wanted to talk more about uh, our favorite guy, too. Bapa. Oh, we've been man. talking a lot about Bapa lately on the show. His and, uh, and, and truck flipping comedy special was hilarious. So, dude. not only did he flip his truck, which we've already talked about... But um, now he is racing. He's he's racing cars. So oh he God. went to the Mint 400. Do you know what the Mint 400 is? No. It's like some sort of thing where you like drive cars in the desert. I don't really know much about it. Okay, it's probably a 400 mile race in the yeah, desert. Yeah. Well, so there was 15 people. Bapa, uh, was one of was them. one of them. And so each car has different drivers. So. Like, cause the race is so long or something. You I don't to know. Switch off. You switch off. Okay. Um, out of the fifteen teams, and whatever amount of drivers are on each team, Bapa got the slowest lap time <laughs> of every single person. So there's like forty five people in total or something. Yeah. No, I think more. I think it's like I think it's like fifteen times fifteen. So whatever that Shit. I think there's like hundred and fifty people that like <laughs> were involved in the race. He's ranked. He even came after his brother who raced the same car with him. So his brother was involved as well. And he came after him and Bapa's supposed to be the car guy. Oh so, dude, dude. So uh He's too clunky to like be agile enough to like drive a car. Yeah, he also predicted. So Francis Ngannou just boxed uh, AJ Smith or whatever. Yeah, he just he got knocked the fuck. Yeah, out. he got knocked out. Uh, Bapa predicted he was gonna win. So <laughs> there are people who have posted their winnings of doing the exact opposite of all of Bapa's predictions, and they've made like tens of thousands of dollars. That makes me think Bapa was just doing what Drake was doing. I think Drake lost a million dollars on that fight. Yeah, I don't know, but Bapa, no, Bapa, no, Bapa does fight cards every week. He's, oh yeah, he used to fight, but he he gets every single one wrong. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, oh, they also caught him on a hot mic during the bare knuckle boxing fight, saying, "Hang on," he's like this, like he's like, "Hang on, man, hang on, man, I gotta go take a pee." He says it like instead of just turning, like so the mics are on or whatever. Like you're not, you don't who. That's insane. Like if you're in a setting where you're commentating something and your voice is obviously the, going to the, be heard. Yeah, it's like the focal point of what you're doing. Why would you why would you say, "Hey, I'll be right back?" Like Dude. it's just it, it's just like such an insane He's the gift that keeps giving. 
he also claimed that he was uh, his his son. He was his son's baseball coach. Uh, a picture just came out because they were in a parade. A picture came out of the baseball team that he is not actually one of the son's coaches. So Dude, there's no way so he, he can lied, swing a bat. He lied about being a baseball coach. It doesn't even matter if you can swing a bat. He just lied about being a coach. <laughs> so like, there's plenty of people who coach who never played the sport. He just lied about being a coach, which is really lame to um, lie about. Yeah. He also their son is eight, and they. Uh, he has his own Instagram. They've been promoting his son on Instagram. Oh my God. Um, dude. yeah, it, it's like, they also, uh, they posted a table that they're selling. They're selling a table, a $3,000 table. They're selling for $995. Oh, what a deal. Okay. But uh, listen, they posted their address on the house to come pick it up. So oh. people now have Bapa's address. Also speaking of, uh, I, I wanted to get, speaking of people's addresses and LA comedians, uh, someone, sent me someone's address and I oh. now have their home address. I'm not going to say who this someone is, but if they hypothetically were to have created a sort of alcohol, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot um, of motherfuckers that are doing and, that and was into pretending to be some sort of mechanized being. Yeah. Um, I, I have their address and, um, I can't say, talk about them. I'm I'm working on some things with a lawyer to figure out what I can. You can't, <laughs> you say. can't say Voldemort. I literally anymore. can't. I can't say it. But uh, if I don't know, fucking <laughs> <laughs> Voldemort. God. So Voldemort, dude. Yeah. Dude, imagine if Voldemort, like movie version, yeah. was fat, shirtless, and hairy. No, you're getting too close. I don't even think we can do that. You can't say. I don't shirtless. even think that we can do. You probably that. can't say shirtless. I, I think. I think we're getting too close. But you guys probably know what it is. I already posted about it, but then um, probably like later. The I was suggested to delete the post. So, uh, some of you know what it is. Some of you don't know. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But back to Papa. So, <laughs> back to Papa. So, uh, it, 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 I just like he's such a confusing character. Like, it's so funny to fail. At everything, like like we're kind of talking about this other person who may or may not have had a, a liqueur, a liqueur company, which is actually a liquor company, not a liqueur. But um, Bapa did the same thing, right? And so he called it Tiger Thick. Yeah, bad name. Which dude. is with three C's, which is just stupid. But so I never understood the Tiger thing. And then his son, Bapa's son's name is Tiger. Okay, but also <laughs> you alcohol. know what I realized? <laughs> so I was researching um. Celebrity alcohols this weekend. Uh, t Connor McGregor's whiskey yeah. has a tiger on it. So he just copied Connor McGregor's whiskey. Tried to just carry and along. And called it Tiger Thick. And because what Connor McGregor does is they buy alcohol that failed quality control from whiskey companies. I'm not sure if it's Jameson or if it's Jack Daniels. I think it's Jack Daniels. Okay. They buy alcohol that failed the quality control, so it's not good enough to be sold as, as Jack, Jack Daniels. Daniels. So they Jeez. they sell it. So what Conor McGregor's team does is they buy it and then they re-age it and they probably filter it a bunch and then it becomes a uh, proper twelve. Well, Brendan Schaub is <laughs> ripping that off. So he's like, <laughs> well, "Yeah, we're Tiger Thick." And he's then ripping a rip off. That yeah, rules. Dude. And so uh, you know, I'm I'm researching all a whole gambit of companies that do this um you know everything from vodka companies uh you know tequila companies um dude spanish people who use spanish you know words because like there's already enough fucking alcohol to go around for everybody but it's but th but that's so that's the interesting thing is like so i when i was doing this research i i figured out it's not just buying distilleries so 70 percent of business new businesses fail 50% of distilleries fail within the first two years. Damn. Um, so it's super easy to find one. But like sometimes they don't even buy the failed distillery. They just buy the alcohol that did not pass quality control for like Grey Goose perhaps. Dude, they do like ghost kitchen shit with like alcohol. Yeah. So it's a Fuck, ghost kitchen dude. for alcohol. <laughs> oh my God. And actually, if you don't know what ghost kitchens are, we should fucking dive into ghost kitchens. Explain dude, those. There's one by my work. There's a... There's okay, a ghost. If I'm getting it right, because I think I learned this from you, because in Mr. Beast, so ghost kitchens are basically fake restaurants online 
they have like a name. They were like Louis Hawaiian Burger. Right. And they have a menu, but everything on their menu is basically from another restaurant. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to you, it's from Lulu's Hawaiian Burger. Yeah. Like, dude, that is. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's completely, uh, well, and that, that was really big during, um, during COVID. That was like what. I feel like it's still big just because DoorDash is huge. There's so many people that don't even have money and use DoorDash. I don't get it. Yeah. DoorDash is like a really weird. I don't really uh, like it. Like my girlfriend uses it all the time. I just, but like what we, what we've started kind of doing is doing like Uber Eats and then I just go pick it up, you know? You just order it to go and go pick it up. Yeah. You just order it to go and then pick it up. I didn't know you could do that through Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. See, I just call the restaurant order and be like, I'm going to come there and pick it up. Yeah. But you live a thousand miles away from everything. Yeah. So you got, your guys is in the ordering food situation must be kind of crazy. Yeah, we don't order you food. You don't. You don't order food at home. We you don't. either you have the three restaurants by us or you're going to town. Yeah. I remember uh one time you guys had groceries delivered for like your birthday or something, and I was like, This is like crazy. This is the first time you've ever had anything delivered to your house. Yeah, dude, so and far. even that, it's only worth it for groceries. And since we're so far, you can like the delivery price is like almost the cost in gas. Yeah. And then it's only we only do it when you get like the promo for like 50% yeah, off. you get like a, a fucking super deal. Does that screw over like the little dashers? Do they make yeah. less money when you do probably. that? Probably. So they I'm probably sure they fucking they, hate they, my they, household. Yeah, probably. They Yeah, for sure. Driving through the mountain. Yeah, you're, you're a piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> but I don't know, dude. I just, I, I just think it's so funny how like these people think that they can pull the wool over people's eyes when it's like you're, you're like, I mean, for one, if you're buying, uh, if you're buying an alcohol because a podcaster is telling you to, you're a fucking idiot. But it's like, but there are you know, people like, like that. But you have to think like even like Mark Norman, right? Who has like they have they have their own whiskey now too, and it's like you have to think there's a reason that these like legacy like blue chip fucking companies exist, like Budweiser or something, and they've been you know, they fucking corner the market because they've been making beer for fucking two hundred years. It's like there's a reason that that's the case. Like, you know, like very rarely do you have, you know, these new companies like pop up that are, you know, like kicking ass like Like solo endeavors completely. Yeah. Like, like every beer is up is like owned by Anheuser-Busch. Like, or, or it's just like, even I'm sure they even, I don't even, I haven't looked into this, but I'm sure they even own like parts of like the huge, like liquor companies and liquor industry. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprising because, like, all. dude, like, okay, here's another example. If you look into, um, like, uh, extremely high end fashion stuff, like Louis Vuitton and yeah, all that stuff. Like, Louis, I think it's like Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Gucci. Every single one is owned by one person. It's really? owned. By, it's all owned by the same person. Yeah, dude, that owns crazy. all of it. Crazy. I just think of um, have you you've been into that part in a like Caesar's Palace where it's like their mall. The like mall in Caesar's Palace in Vegas that you walk through. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Like a bunch of shops, dude. Mm-hmm. Like seventy five percent of the shops are Louis Vuitton, Dior. Yeah, it's owned all. It's all like of literally that is, basically one. All company. of that is one company split into like fifty stores. Yeah, it's all one company. So dude, there's that's fucking so wild. Th- so of every of every single luxury brand, like let's say all of them, mm-hmm. like Lacoste, like all of them. There's three companies that break all of them up. It's like but, the banks. But like, yeah, so it's all owned by one of these three companies. So like, and the guy who owns it is said to be, the guy who owns this company is like on paper the richest person in the world. He's the richest man in the world. And But he's not like in Forbes or anything like that because it's always... No, he is. Oh, okay. No, he is. Like on Forbes, he's the richest man in the world because Elon's not number one. Oh, not if you listen to Joe Rogan. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, well, Joe Rogan's a fucking idiot, dude. Dude, you got me uh, thinking, going back to even boxing. Mm-hmm. Dude, one of like the biggest, a, a great grift I'm watching right now play out. It just was announced, I think, yesterday, a couple days ago. Is, uh, Jake Paul or Logan Paul fighting Tyson? Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. What Mike the? Tyson's going to fuck him up. Dude, regardless, like, just think about how triggered your dad is by this fight. No, dude, there's a video. He released a video. Did you see it? Tyson? No, Jake Paul. No. So Jake Paul, it's funny he says, I watched it this morning. So Jake Paul is sitting by his dad on the couch and he's like, hey dad, who was your favorite boxer growing up? And he's like, oh, fucking Mike Tyson. Easy. And he's, he's like, like hands down. And he's like, I'm fighting Mike Tyson next summer. And his dad's like, 
he's going to fucking hurt you. I, I'm pretty sure his dad goes like, oh, that's what he says. He goes, he's going to be the hardest person, h- hardest hitting person you've ever like boxed. And he's like, I know. Dude, I'm crazy, right? They're going to get a lot of views. It's on Netflix. Yeah, dude, Tyson's going to hurt him. I really do think Tyson, like Tyson has a y- almost a year to train. Oh, no, it's in July. I'm sorry, not almost a year, but I mean, he's, he's five, known about it. Five months. Yeah, he's known about it. But before. I mean, like I went to the gym Tyson trained at. Yeah. My, my coach... Rafael Cordero trained Mike Tyson and like they would have days where they would shut down the entire gym and it was only Mike in there. And it was like, like that it, it's, I mean, Mike, Ty, like Mike Tyson's in crazy shape. Yeah. But like 57. when he fought, um, who's the last guy he fought? They're both old. I don't know. He, he fought that older boxer. And like, it, you can tell that like, like they had an agreement to like, all right, dude, no fucking. Yeah. Did he oh. fight Roy Jones jr. Or something? It was someone like that. I thought that that ended up not happening. No, I remember, um, maybe it wasn't that one, but I know he fought like a, yeah. an older guy. It was like, I'm bad with boxing. I, 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 I mean, I don't know, dude. I've seen Mike Tyson move. Uh, oh, no, he moves great. Even while, like, like, but this just seems too perfect yeah. to like make money off of, to like be. Yeah, 100%. I mean, the, Mike, you have to think like Mike Tyson completely flamethrowed, flamethrowed? <laughs> flame he, through. He lit a flame all of his <laughs> money. Like, he was worth like a hundred million dollars at one point. He like just spent it all. He was he literally had no money. So oh dude, when he's he, completely like re when he came out on the Hangover, that was like his first yeah appearance and like oh Mike Tyson's funny. This yeah. is funny because he's singing. Well, and then he got the shows and he got yeah a bunch right of after that and, dude it just started um, pouring at him for it. Yeah, I I personally Mike Tyson's one of my biggest influences in in all of aspects. I I really think that it's cool that he was able to. Uh, repurpose and like rebrand his life and stuff. I think because you know I don't know I was like a fucking alcoholic loser idiot. At so. least he didn't sexually assault anyone. Who you like Mike, Mike Tyson, Tyson did. did? Yeah, yeah. So you got that on you. Yeah, I do have that. I mean, don't let but, him influence you too hard. Yeah, anybody. no, I know. But uh, there's a lot of sketchy details with that. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit go on the record and say that I think Mike Tyson is anything. But I'm just saying what everybody else is saying. You know. Yeah, I don't know. I I think it would be great if he like fucked up Jake Paul. Dude, it just seems like the perfect thing to get everybody that's like 65 to 18 to tune into this. Every thing. it's every it's demographic. To, dude, like it's every like, it's probably going to be the one of the most watched things of all time. That's I'm what assuming. I was thinking. I was like, could this be the biggest fight, like just numbers wise of all probably, time? Probably, it probably will be. That just speak, dude. The fact that that is true, like, kind of makes me sad. <laughs> well, it just shows that everything is fake and gay. Like we've been talking. Very, very fake and gay. The whole point of the show is that we have said that everything is fake. Like everything, every single thing you see is just a grift. It's all fake. And, and that's why. Dude, if it goes to a decision, it's fucking bullshit. It, this, is, this is why I think it's funny. Like with, with, with everything being a grift and kind of like we've had episodes where we talk about that. That's like with the alcohol thing. It's like I don't have a problem with grifting. I don't. People can spend their money however they want. People can try to make money however they want. I have a problem with trying to pretend it's anything it's not. So yeah, like camouflaging your it's, grift it's, is something. Yeah, else. it's just like you know, like me saying, uh, you know, like like it's kind of just like being upfront. Like we have a Patreon. We've said so many times that this is a a hail mary to try to like get money to boost ourselves into yeah, the dude. upper the upper atmosphere of uh you know financial fucking whatever because with the way that uh our we the way that we are and the way that our lives have gone you know getting super m- financially upwardly mobile is going to be difficult so this is a way to sort of um get ourselves out of that you yeah, know it's kind of so, like um, the last thing you do is to join a band to make it we don't have a band. Yeah, so... Oh, you do. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have a band. Not actually. a band, but you have a, a thing other than this. Yeah, but also, like... I just you have know, a wife. But the, but the point is, is we're upfront about what we're doing. We're not, like, saying... I'm not saying that anything else... I'm not saying anything other than what it is. Yeah, and that's when, like, people are like, oh, dude, why can't you just not hate on people? It's like, we're not hating on... We're hating on them fucking trying to be... We're not even hating. Bullshitting you. We're not hating. We're just... I am. I don't... I don't... I don't. I didn't know that saying the truth is hating. I don't know. I, Cause I've never said that. Uh, you know, I've never made like um, qualitative, objective statements about. You know, I think so and so is X, Y, and Z. I just say, um, this is what it is. Yeah. This is like the truth. Like I don't know if. You know, it, it's it's kind of like someone commented on. 
uh, the video I made talking about celebrity alcohols and, and he said like, Oh, I used to work for this company that, um, grew legal weed and we used to grow weed for Willie Nelson and Willie Nelson's weed was notoriously, um, weed that they purchased that had mold in it. They would buy cheap weed from growers that and had like mold in it, it and just re and then what they would do is they would sh- turn it all into shake and then they would gr- roll pre-rolls with it. Yeah. And what companies go into weed, I know this category yep, a lot. Yeah, no, go um, off King. So what a lot of people even do and have been doing forever, it, there's a reason why vape pens are so fucking popular, dude. They get moldy weed. They get um, like termite infested weed, mm-hmm. um, whatever bugs they are. Earwigs. Any just shit weed, all the bottom trimmings, everything. And then they just sell it to either uh, people who make hash yeah. or, or, da- or wax pens. Mm-hmm. And those fucking pens, what like anybody who knows their shit with weed people would call those hot dogs in the making process because it's the fucking same thing as a hot dog where they take everything you don't want and just put it into this mold of a fucking thing and everybody loves it. Yeah. Cause it's fucking just full of nitrates. Yeah. I mean, that's, but, but that's like, you know, people don't know that. So like when, I mean, the thing is, is like if you're buying like, oh, this is moldy weed. This is moldy pre-rolled weed, and I know it's shitty quality, and I know that. That's one thing. But to then, like, oh, Willie Nelson put his face on it, and, and now it's twice as much. Like, that sucks. Like, that's, like, not cool. Oh, yeah, dude. That's what you know? every shit. They even had Joey Diaz put his name on weed, and he talked about how that wasn't a good idea. He's like, I didn't do anything for them. Yeah. It's, I don't know, dude. I, I think that time of, like, oh, you can go get the Wiz Khalifa weed, and now you can get the Action Bronze. That I think that's gone. Maybe in just yeah. this state. Maybe it might be in like... Probably in other states. Yeah, it'll happen when it starts legalizing. But like, dude, a yeah. few years after it being legalized, like even the people that were fooled by that, they're they're just like, I just want good weed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't... Um, but there are people who are... They're not going to even look into it enough to understand what that means. So that's like kind of um, like my point. So like, like if you just... You have to like tell people... You have to tell people that. Like they're not going to know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he, they're going to think, you know, I don't know. Like they're going to think um, like Beats by Dre. Beats by Dre are shitty headphones, but yeah, it's Dr. Dr. Dre thing. put his name on them. So you're like, oh, these are, must be good. So anything that's like celebrity endorsed, dude, it it's should probably raise. Just, it's probably just trash. Yeah. It should raise an eyebrow to you. Yeah. Because like the only alcohol I've ever heard that was good was Clooney's. Casamigos. Casamigos. I used to drink that shit all the time. Dude, that shit's expensive. Yeah, I used to drink it all the time. I bought a bottle for like 50 bucks. I'm like, damn, but it, it was silver. Yeah, well, some people are are selling uh, other like like vodka for like way more than that. The Which is stupid, dude. Like way more than $50. For, as someone who like when I drink, I'd rather just drink vodka. Mainly because like I can have something after it or with mm-hmm. it to make that taste go away. Do you notice, do you notice how uh, this particular brand of vodka... It, like hypothetically, if I was talking about it, notice how none of none of them discuss how it's made. No, why would they do or, that? Or how they get it? It's all just kind of like. Yeah, usually people who care about like the quality of yeah, the product, they, they're good. they want to show you where it's sourced. Yeah, how it's sourced. Yeah, all the disti- yeah yeah. They want to show you their anything. like warehouse of barrels. Yeah, I haven't seen that. <laughs> Am I just missing something? Weird, huh? Dude, even Sam Adams in their like 30 second commercials a lot yeah. have like, here's our winter ale. Yeah. They'll show you their factory. Yeah, I, haven't their seen, little I haven't seen any of that. Not with these. Liquor, I don't know. Not with celebrity liquor. I tell you. I don't know. Interesting. It's pretty weird. I wonder. The, <laughs> dude. Well, and the thing, the thing that makes tequila expensive is it, it only it's from one place on the whole planet. That's what makes it expensive. And like, or even like whiskey, it like there's age and like time that goes into like developing the flavor. Well, no, why would I do that? I just buy, I just buy the shitty stuff from Jack Daniels. And then la- relabel it. There's yeah. the dude. The placebo effect is real. Fuck it. Yeah. But that's why, like, I will never spend a shit ton of money on vodka. It all basically tastes the same until you get to like, like, like taka. Yeah, yeah taka. Like we the talked pop-pop. about, dude. But like, if you go to Smirnoff to Sky to fucking Grey Goose, there is barely, barely a difference. They all taste the same. Some are just a little more harsh. And yeah, dude, I don't know. I think yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah, it's super. I don't know. I don't know, man. I think uh, alcohol is bullshit. I mean, I, I think it would be crazy, like, especially if you endorse a certain brand, like, for example, like Tito's. Yeah. Like, if you just happen to... Your whole career. If you just happen to have, like, Tito's, uh, like, yeah, endor- I mean, endorsing you. Yeah, no, like, like, something like, that's your favorite. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you could probably... I'm sure at some point, if you basically had an endorsement from that company, 
you could probably weasel your way into being like, hey, do you guys have any any stuff that doesn't doesn't fit your quality control that we could probably take? Especially if I'm like, if I'm not gonna like, I know I'm not gonna be representing your vodka anymore, so yeah. I'm not gonna be like pouring like, it or talking on the. What if we just took your shitty? Yeah, stuff what if we still make you money on the back end though, and probably more money? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Dude. actually, yeah. So I, I don't know. Think about it. <clears throat> but about you know, it. I don't know. Uh, anyways, quality grifting. Anyways, anyways. Wait. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let me glance at my notes. Yeah, notes. let's see what fucking notes you got. Oh here. my god, dude. Um, do you remember like your first pair of nice shoes? Yeah. What were they? Etnies. Oh shit! I, remember I had a those. pair of Etnies, dude. I got these Etnies in fourth grade. I remember that's like when I was like, I'm cool now, dude. Skater shoes used to be skater so shoes used to be cool. so sick. I remember I was obsessed with like um I wanted uh, Osiris D threes. Okay. Like more than anything, this was probably like. 2000 mm -hmm. 99 2000 and this was when my, i was like still around my dad and he's like no what we're gonna do he's like we're gonna take you and get you some nice quality shoes okay so we went to like a footlocker at like the in the mall and he didn't even let me pick my shoes out this is how fucking crazy my dad is he's like we're getting you these kind they were all white and red and they're notoriously one of the ugliest jordans they're jordan twos mm -hmm. and the sweet like they're I don't like, even know what a Jordan 2 looks like. There's a reason for that. They're really ugly. Fuck yeah. They, like, that rocks. Especially when you compare them to a Jordan 1 or a Jordan 3. Anything Jordan after. 1 and th like the 1s and the 3s are like the best. And, yeah. the, and the 7s. Yeah, 1 through 7, great shoes besides 2. Let me see what the Jordan 2 looks like. Dude, they're just like weird oh, dad. Oh, those suck. Dude, they're like weird dad shoes. <laughs> that sucks. So he paid like 100 bucks for these. And... It's because I needed shoes. Uh, Me and my brother, we both fucking, we both got the, we were forced to get the same kind of shoes. Mm -hmm. Weird parenting. But then um, we got to go up to uh, Washington to see grandpa. Yeah. That's pretty much there. My dad was trying to stunt. Oh, I mean, okay. like, oh, I bought my kids Jordans. I, yeah. For which sure. Grandpa doesn't it. give a shit about. Oh, no. He's, he's like, oh. So, he's like, why don't you just be a dad? Yeah. Why don't you like exist? <laughs> to parent your kids. Yeah. And, um, I went over to our cousin's house, uh, Wesley and Maddie, mm -hmm. and they were the weirdest, weirdest, like sketchiest kids I've met at that age. Yeah. They took us to like this, um, in the, like out in the woods behind their house, like uh -huh. in Washington. So like, I thought it was just normal dirt and it ended up being like swamp. <laughs> swamp what? woods. So we ended up, I ended up getting like stuck up to like my calves in like mud in, dude, in the Jordan twos, and you fucked him up, dude. I brought these shoes back to California like two weeks later, and they were fucked. They were like scratched up, yeah, yeah. like mud stuck in them, and he fucking blew his shit, dude. <laughs> dude, I I've never that heard memory. that story. No, I was trying. I've been digging for stories because my brain works like in dumb ways. I forget a lot of things. Yeah, probably because the the car crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. seven. Yeah, but dude, I remember how fucking mad he was. But I was so happy because I didn't want these fucking shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're, you're like these suck, dude. I'm like I'm watching skateboarding and I want what everybody at kids, every yeah cool, skate shoes, you know, every cool, cool skate shoes. Fucking school had D threes, dude. Yeah, that was my shot. Yeah, and you that's so funny. Yeah, uh, I was. It's so funny you bring up the trips with the grandpa. I was thinking about the one that one year where we went up to the island. We went up to this Dude. island off of the coast of Washington and we like fished and just like, we went like fishing every day. Like nine days. Um, yeah. And I remember we caught, we kept the tallies of like points. Like if you caught a fish, you got a point. Remember we, we kept, we kept this tally of like points. Like if you won horseshoes, you got points. I, I remember I won. I yeah. fucking beat you guys. I, I caught remember. no fish. I Dude, yeah. to this day, I've never caught an edible fish. Really? Yeah, there's something wrong with me. That's fishing. so funny. I've caught those fucking dogfish. Yeah, I remember you. I remember you used to you used to sink your fishing line to the bottom of the ocean, and Grandpa would get so pissed at you because you would because you would you would try to catch a dogfish, and he would get mad because they eat the line. No, Michael would try to catch the dogfish. Oh, Michael would. That I was would Michael. just try to catch anything. Yeah, yeah, that was Michael because he. I remember they gave him like, dude, my brother's so autistic. They gave him like a pack of bacon. Uh huh. And he like was at the dock of like where the island is, like yeah. just fishing, catching those things over and over and over, and Why? like collecting. I don't know. It's like he was just happy to catch something. Yeah, but they weren't even edible. So yeah, that was definitely Michael. That do you remember? Grandpa. Do you remember when we were catching the bull bull bullheads? Yeah, the sculpins. Yeah, we were catching these fish, and like, dude, by the end of the trip, so we stood out on this dock, and we were just catching these fish over and over and over, and like. Dude, by the end of the week, 
like we were catching the same ones for a week straight. So they had like no lips. They had like no <laughs> mouths. I remember this. They were fucked up. And then I remember um, we would sink our lines to the bottom and like occasionally you'd get a crab. Yeah. So a crab would jump on. And whenever the crabs see the light, they let go. Yeah. So like they they're able to I get off the hook. I remember you caught a crab. No, and I caught one and I brought it up onto the fucking. I remember that. Onto shit, the dude. fucking you're dock. On the dock. Yeah. yeah, and we fucking smashed it and we fucking ate it. Yeah, maybe you got like the you're good at catching things. I'm. Yeah. I went on herpes. a guaranteed <laughs> charter. Uh -huh. For like a we got from my stepdad. Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. Where they like guarantee your they go to they use like their radar and they go to like where the fish are. Yeah. Michael caught six fish. Bill caught three. Your boy caught zero. That's so sick. Dude, I don't catch anything edible. Yeah, I caught a so flounder funny. this big one time. I remember, I just remember Michael always, our cousin Michael, or my cousin Michael, his brother, uh, aka Mac, uh, <laughs> he would just make grandpa so mad all the time. Like everything he dude. did. Do you remember when- Dude, and grandma. Dude, do you remember when we went to, um, we went to the water park? Yes. And we went to leave and Michael, he, they were like, you guys need to meet us here at like 3.30. We're like, yep, rules are we're rules. Like, rules are rules. You got it. Heart <laughs> of the cards. Oh, if you want to hear a funny ass story, oh, if yeah, you want to hear dude. the heart of the cards story, you got to go to the Patreon. It's so fucking that's funny. That's a good one. Patreon.com slash duds. Anyways. Oh, dude, that's so funny. <laughs> I believe in the heart of the cards. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, you want to see heart of the cards? You little cheater. <laughs> uh, fucking basically, long story short, I fucked up this kid in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like a little eight-year-old boy. And, I, <laughs> and the, the reason I did it was he kept cheating. So I, um, I stole his fucking cards and I put them in my deck. Stole because he kept, he kept putting his his best cards on the top of his deck and he would he just happened to have them and i asked him how do you keep getting those cards and he said it must be the heart of the cards like yugi you operation so, paperclip so we went to we went to shuffle our decks and i stole them while he wasn't looking and put them <laughs> on the top of my deck and destroyed them this was literally two days ago but anyways um go to the patreon if you want to hear the whole thing so no so we're like rules are rules and yeah we show up at 3 30 and we get picked up and then michael wasn't there no and he Dude, it took like 45 minutes to find him. No, wasn't he with a girl? I think so. He had like found some chick. Yeah, no, Michael, dude. When he was Michael, like 14. Yeah, when he was like in his teens, he was a good looking kid. He yeah, he should have like he was. found there's, a sport. There's a picture of all of us. There's a bunch of pictures of all of us when we were growing up on, in that big. I have this big yeah. thing and it's a bunch of pictures of us. And I was looking at Michael and I was like, he was like really handsome, dude. He was like, really. Dude, my biological dad, he was good looking. Yeah. But I just feel like sometimes when you're just a big old asshole, it like it, it'll make you look different. Really? You think so? I think so. Yeah. But you know how like you get like gut <laughs> feeling at like, oh, that's a bad person. Yeah. And like I'm gonna avoid them. I yeah. think there's like some of that at play and like with Probably. I, I maybe because like humans are great at like finding we're like meant to find patterns and things. Yeah. Well so there's like, that's interesting you say that because there's a... Uh, um, this and we're gonna get a fucking we're gonna get a little religious here, dude. So I would play the don't come take me higher, but I I I'm, I don't want to use the soundboard. Can I'm you with. take um, me high? I got fucking you. um, there is like a, a theory that like because you know your God made you, and uh you know as you get further from God, you start to look uglier because whatever God, like what God makes is perfect. So like the more bad you become, the uglier you become, like you become unrecognizable to dude. That's to why, God. that's why ugly babies really like fucking freak people yeah, out. Probably. Dude, yeah, They're like, yeah. That's not normal. That's I mean, not normal. It's pretty hard to be an ugly baby. Like that's hard. It's hard, but like, you like see we're it in biologically movies. designed to like be like, you're uh, your baby's cute. You're adorable. Speaking of, speaking of ugly babies, I want you to talk for about 10 seconds. I'm going to get my laptop. Dude, I, if, if, would I ever have a kid, dude, and the baby's ugly, I, my world might fall apart dude, because. Be, there's a chance. I mean, there's probably a one in 10 chance you have an ugly baby. Yeah, but then, so like, because sometimes you see kids, like, I'm a good example. I wasn't the greatest looking kid. It might have been because of weight, but man, I really blossomed there in high school when I lost the weight. So maybe if you have an ugly baby, maybe they're going to be like supermodel shit when they, uh, when they get. Past it all. You know what's funny is um or they'll kill themselves. Sam, Sam the Hyde movie. Sam Hyde has this thing and he says like he says um you know what's funny is like when you're he's like I I bet you if you start going to the gym and you start working out suddenly you'll just magically become more likable. You know what I mean? Cuz like you start to look better, your appearance becomes better and he's like people will probably start to like you more. So that's kind of like what happened with you. I feel like you started like you started playing football and you lost like what a hundred pounds. 
No, it actually, it probably wasn't even that much because because I was growing. Yeah, you, so, I don't know, 40 pounds, yeah. and you started looking better, and you're like, your socialization was immediately better. Oh, yeah, dude, and even, like, the... Because I got fat twice. I, after high school, I got fat because I, when I got, a, when I got like, diagnosed with epilepsy, they're like, can't play anymore. I'm like, okay, so I'm just going to go play video games. And So you got fat again? Were we, like, not really... We weren't really around each other when that happened, huh? This was 2007. Oh, I was in seventh grade. I didn't really see you that So much. this was my junior year when I had to, like... I had... The doctor was like, you can still play football, but you're epilepsy. You're going to have more seizures the more you get hit in the head. And I'm like, okay, so... So don't, don't do play that. football. Yeah, so don't play football. Should have just said, don't do this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just went straight from like same like football diet, like eating three hamburgers for right. dinner to still eating three hamburgers, but my exercising was counter strike. And <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Dude, so I got up to my fattest I got, I got up to 235 by I think age 20. That's fucking big, dude. I was 245. That's the biggest I ever was. And you're taller than me. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so it was bad. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. And I don't remember this. This was all like 17 to 20. This was like three years. of like, Yeah, so this is like when we were probably weren't really. Dude, I remember like I started smoking weed probably. It was the end of high school, like very end. Yeah. And there was like a time at like 19 years old where like I got super stoned and I looked at what I was eating and I'm like, you're doing this to yourself. Yeah, it clicked. And then for like two months after that, my dinner was just green beans. Really? I just had green beans for dinner like every night. And you just lost it all? And I had a pull-up bar, just did that in pull-ups, and I, lo- I got down to like 170. Damn. Like, holy shit. If you move your body. Yeah. It's that's crazy. Wild. So that's crazy. You could say... Um, when was your fat range? 20... Eight, 20, like 18 to like 20, 21. Dude, three years. Yeah, it's like three years. We both years. had like a three well, year phase. a lot of mine was because like it was obviously from drinking, but also they like started putting me on these weird meds. Oh, that's another thing with me too. So like they, because I don't know, dude, like uh, they put me on like Lexapro. Like I they, I just had a drinking problem and they were just like, you're depressed. You're fucking bipolar. You're depressed and anxious. I am bipolar for sure. Like I'm definitely bipolar, but um. Yeah, That's they kept. Fun. They kept. Yeah, it is fun. Now it's fun. I'm just sober. <laughs> and I just don't manage it. And I just, I'm like, I, I'll, I'll literally have weeks where I'm like, I'll tell, I'll text people. I'm like, I can't talk to you this week because I'll freak out on you. So I just don't. <laughs> and they're like, okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> so fun. funny. Yeah, there's definitely times like on the show, like, dude, I had a full manic breakdown on a live stream like two weeks ago. Hundred oh, percent. Like, I drank way too much coffee and was manic, and I kept thinking that the. I, I was playing it off as a joke. You're like, fuck, Ryan Garcia is he? Right? No, no. The there's a guy. There's a fucking. A guy mowing the lawn in front of my room, my window. Uh, and I was like, he's for sure a fed. Like, f- there's he's no. He's doing this on purpose. No, it was, yeah. I was like, there's no way. He, like, I, he has to know I'm streaming in here. He has to. So, so like, I, I was kind of playing into it as a bit, but like, and then the live stream kept crashing. It crashed three times in a row. It, and I was just like, yeah, this is, I, I was like, this is fucking de- determined. But, um, yeah, it was because they kept putting me on weird stuff, but I went from like one. Uh, probably like 175 to like two, 247 was the most Damn. I ever weighed. Yeah, dude, we had like eerily like a similar weight yeah. thing. Because when I was in football, I was trying to gain weight mm-hmm. at, when I was at, when they moved me to fullback. So I was 168. I remember I was trying to crack 170 and I couldn't. Dude. Yeah. And then it just skyrocketed to 235. Yeah. But you reminded me like they put me on fucking Depakote. Yeah, why would they ever put you on that? I guess it helps with seizures, but it fucks your shit. Yeah, up. that's really so. Like, I remember, like, I Depico, requested to, like Depakote's get... like an antipsychotic. Yeah, dude, and makes no sense. I had to request like a certain medication from my doctor for her to like take me, and she was still reluctant to like put me on it. Yeah, she makes money. Yeah, dude, that's when like when She's I got to pay those student loans years bills. later that like doctors get a cutback off yep. certain medications. Yep. Like, dude. This shit's some bullshit. Don't go to the doctor unless you like really need to, man. You're like hurt really bad or something. Fucking... Don't give medical advice on the show. Oh, I was talking to you. I was okay, talking okay. to the, everybody. Okay. So uh, we've been hating on Lex Friedman a lot lately. Uh, I, I I think it's, I, I just want to, I don't know. I just think that this is funny. He's reading Nirvana. He's so easy. By Charles Bukowski. Um, just, just, <laughs> I just want you to know this. If, this is like if you have it, like you ever seen like a white chick who has eat, pray, love or something or like, yeah. or like live, laugh, 
frequency or whatever on her wall. This is the equivalent of that. This is the male equivalent of that. You just wear a shitty suit and tie and make that your personality. And then you just read Charles Bukowski, who I think is like a pretty average mid fucking writer. He has this one book. uh, It's called like factotum or something fucking stupid. (laughs) And I read it and it's literally just a story about this guy who like keeps getting different jobs and then getting kicked out of the jobs. Like it's the book sucks. It's just, (laughs) it's just a guy that, let me see. Yeah. Let me see what this book is even. I think it's called factotum. So what is Lex's whole fucking fascination with him? Like probably that, uh, probably that he was like a bad boy. <laughs> no, like literally, like it's probably that he was like a bad boy and like Lex is like a pussy. Yeah, that's probably where because like, like Bukowski was like a fucking womanizer, alcoholic. He was like always cheating on like wives and like shit. Like a fu- yeah, this guy was not anyone to like I want like- to be. He's a piece of shit, like a horrible human. That's interesting. And I and I don't really make uh, qualitative statements like that. So let me see. Factotum follows. Oh, also Charles Bukowski would write uh, as this guy named Henry Chin- Chinaski, and um, it was like just him. He was just writing stories about him as Henry Chinaski. So it's obviously him, though. Henry Chinaski is Charles Bukowski yeah, rearranged, but it's really obvious that's like yeah, oh, it's that's like his obviously pen name. him. Yeah, it's maybe don't start your pen name like end it. No, with it's, it's not his. It's not his pen name. It's the character in the book. Oh. That, yeah, it's so last um, name's too close. to Yeah, Bukowski. so it's like Bukowski's perpetually unemployed alcoholic alter ego Henry Chinaski is rejected from the world rejected from the World War II draft and makes his way from one menial job to another. So. It's like a shitty version of Reacher. It literally is just this guy. It's literally just about him not j- it just getting jobs. Just like it's mid. Li- just a mid ass. Not person. even mid, dude. <laughs> just like it, it, it's like this is literally the story. Yeah, I got on a this is this is how I read it. I got on a bus. I went over to Chicago. I lost my job. I got on a bus. I got drunk on the bus. I went to Detroit. I lost my job. I went to Los Angeles. I worked in a newspaper stand. I worked there for three weeks. I got drunk on the job. I had sex. I lost my job. That's the whole book. Like a shitty Joey Diaz. Yeah, and then, (laughs) no, literally, he just talks about going around the country, losing jobs. And this one time, and then this one time. Yeah. And Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan. I had a job, and it was mid, and I left. I always love how Joey Diaz's stories, every single story he tells, Somehow he makes an abordinate amount of money, and you know I had about I, I so I, I used to sell I used to sell cars I I fucking sold his car I had seventeen thousand dollars I used to make twenty thousand dollars a month selling cars it's let like, me tell you it's like let me dude, tell you then dog. why it's like you would have never stopped doing that like you're guy, a fucking liar like I used to have five, fifteen kilos of coke on me at all times yeah it's like, like you're that's impossible yeah he's such a liar dude yeah but I mean what what comedian isn't. They're most like they're all no. Just, they're all they're all. There's a difference between embellishing and then just lying. Like, yeah, no, I don't think to them like to people like Voldemort. I don't think it's like that. I think they they like convince themselves it's like a level of reality because like they see themselves as a character. It's fucking weird to me, dude. Mainly talking Voldemort here. Yeah, <laughs> but that's just like not. I mean, like I'll like exaggerate a story. For sure, for laughs, but like, I don't believe the story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, but I don't like, know. Like, after doing that for like, say you do that for a couple of years, and then you find out when you do lie, people fucking just love it. You're like, I don't oh. know. That's I don't know. Here, well, let's get back to let's get back to this. Let's just I, I just want to listen to Lex make me laugh. So Nirvana by Charles Bukowski. Oh God, not much chance. Completely cut loose from purpose. He was a young man riding a bus to North Carolina on the way to somewhere, and it began to snow. And I wanted you in my ass. I just don't... Okay. Why is he reading it like that? It, that I think that's like... Why in is his he mind, reading it like that? Because I think like in his mind, that's how like the pacing... Of, like It makes it sound better than it is when you pace things like that. Like It makes it more interesting, right? Like it, At least it does to me. It sounds like it's more insightful when you have that type of pacing to... So, you know, no, well, the thing know, with poetry, when, poetry does have a certain pacing, just the way it's written. So yeah, the, but the pacing way he's is talking. It's like, it no, makes but, it yeah, but it's like, 
Yeah, why are you uploading these to the internet? Like, why are you reading poetry? It's just fucking weird. What is this guy's fucking talent? Up at a little cafe in the hills, and the passengers entered, and he sat at the counter with the others, and he ordered. The food arrived, and the meal was particularly good, and the coffee. <laughs> The waitress was unlike the women he had known. This is so fucking stupid. And there was a natural humor which came from This like what is the purpose of this? So was that did he upload that like onto YouTube? Yes, this is, is his oh, channel is on he just his staring into the camera like a fault. Oh my god, it's as crazy as I thought. Dude, look at his face. He's like laughing. Wait. He's just looking down the whole time. Let me let me see what he says. Writing music and poetry have been a part of my life for many years, along with science and martial arts. <laughs> I make everything. <laughs> I've written a lot of songs, almost which no one's ever heard, including close friends. Me playing covers and reading this poem is a step towards it. My main passion is artificial intelligence. He's like a weird version <laughs> of Steven Seagal. But guitar, piano, wrestling, jujitsu, and judo have all helped me in that pursuit in fundamental ways that I hope to eludicate over time. If this is not your thing, Please be patient and ignore it. But if you enjoy it, your support and love are always appreciated. I, I just don't. What what is what is this? Like, just what putting is, books on tape. What what is what he doing? What is I, what it, like, what are you? What is your goal? Like it's covering a song is different. That makes sense. You're covering a song. Uh, you, what are you doing? Like even in a cover, sometimes you change things. Well, up, the like, point of a cover is you're listening to an artist you enjoy do something that is not theirs. Yeah. So Lex Friedman is not a poet. Dude, he's a, he, It would be like if Lex Friedman was a poetry writer and he's like, I'm going to read Charles Bukowski. That would make sense. More celebrities are like Steven Seagal than not. And I'm not saying Lex is a celebrity, but when you look at like... <laughs> I'm not saying Lex is... A, Lex thinks this is cool. Dude, when you look at Steven Seagal's career... Everybody's uh -huh. kind of doing that same fake act. Like Lex is doing this shit where he's like, you know, you can learn a lot about the world when you practice hand to hand combat with people. Yeah, like arts. who taught? No one talks like that. Like Lex Friedman is Steven a guy. Seagal does. Le oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. Okay, sorry, I lost, I lost the the fucking point there. Sorry, dude. Like his, he really does sound like Steven Seagal. Like you get Steven Seagal and his mysticism shit, or like how he lo much he loves Russia. Yeah. It's weirdly parallel. <laughs> Thank you so much for le sharing, Lex. It is a very beautiful poem. It reminds me of how unworthy we are. <laughs> Jesus. Unworthy. Wow, what a gift. Thanks for sharing. These people can't be real. No way. Hearing this on Joe Rogan was such a beautiful moment in my life. Not I was for driving, Joe. passing an empty parking lot. What the fuck are these people, When dude? Lex got to the end, and I just pulled in and parked, and I felt something. I can't describe... No what the feeling was besides wow i sat and reflected on it rewound closed my eyes and listened again since then i've seen i'm gonna just write you're gay that's insane dude i hate i hate dude even if it's real sometimes <laughs> i fucking hate I when people are like oh i was driving and listening to this and it was so powerful <laughs> that i had to pull over and either laugh or cry <laughs> i, I like, just got i commented i just commented and responded and it just said gay <laughs> dude that is so gay <laughs> God, That's crazy. Like, man. has there really ever been a time where you're maybe heard something so funny or profound that you're like, oh, dude, I got to pull over Never at this in my rest life. stop? Never in my life. I Never can't, in my I life. can't operate this vehicle anymore. It's so intense. I've, That's I've crazy. listened to, I don't even know, dude. I've listened to probably, I, I had to have listened to in my life, how many podcasts and radio, like how much oh, radio? Yeah, 10,000 hours at least. Yeah. For real, like seriously, it's genuinely. No, I believe you. Um, when like, I used so, to listen to Stitcher, they would mm -hmm. track your hours at the bottom of that. Yeah. App. And I was listening on Stitcher for seven years. I had 7,500 and something hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, th like I've never, I, I think there's been times I've been laughing so hard at particularly come down that like my driving would be affected. Like, like would, maybe swerve a tiny yeah, bit. Yeah, I've never had to pull over. I, those are my favorite when people are like, I almost crashed my car. <laughs> Dude, I was going to crash my car if I, I kept don't, going. Yeah. It's like, no, yeah. you already hit the peak of funny. You can keep going. You yeah, can, I, I don't know, girl. dude. I just I just, I just, just don't understand like Lex Friedman. I, I think it's so funny. Like, 
it's so weird that we posted that video or, or not even us, the kill podcasters clips guy. Oh yeah. Posted that, posted that video of, um, us saying in my ass to Lex. Yeah. And it within, within 10 minutes, it was flagged for sexual misconduct really? and it was removed from Instagram. And then when they put it back up, they put it back up without sound. Dude. So, and we didn't, it, it said for lewd, uh, not lewd, I'm sorry, sexual con- content. And, it, and it, we just said, said ass. in my ass. Yeah. That's literally every tagline. Every but every single time it's anything that pertains to those, that, the, little group that little group, it's always uh, sexual content. So I think that they know that if they report it as that, it will be removed. Dude, that's a group of 250 murderers. Murderers and killers. <laughs> All right, that's an hour. Holy shit, we got an hour. Holy shit. Patreon.com slash duhids. To you. weird. It's Anytime weird. you bring up something that's super wrong, weird. I never do that shit to you. I'm like, oh, dude, I've been doing this for this long. I don't fucking... Uh. We literally, never literally three episodes ago, we had a massive fight, and that's all you did was, was uh, fucking grandstand about how you played bass for 13 years. Because I get true. zero credit for anything I've done because...